Hi, my name is Wilnan Ziada, and I'm a New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film. And I'm also a proud Phoenix Global Artist Ambassador. Today, I'm so excited to be speaking with the award-winning comedy and songwriter, Seth Bisonhirsch. For more on Seth, you can read more about him right below this video. But in the meantime, here's a sneak peek at the amazing talent of Seth. I am all alone, all because I own. your mother not teach you to watch where you're going? What could possibly be so important that you have to respond right now? Oh, that's fine. Just leave. I get it. You can't handle real life confrontation. But if I had texted you this, you would respond three days later with an L that had been accidentally autocorrected from a K. Well, did you plug it in and recharge it? So you haven't had sex in three months? I never said that. Did you try pushing our own and off buttons right here on the side? Where are the interpersonal connections, people? Well, hello, Seth. How are you? I'm great, Will. Thank you. It's, it's great to see you. It's been a while. It has been a while, my friend. Well, the audience just got a little sneak peek of your pilot for your situational comedy that you wrote and starred in called Every Day a Little Seth. And yeah, that was so much fun. I, I love doing that. Uh, it, it seems like it was a long time ago because everything pre-pandemic feels like it was a different lifetime. Like we could actually go outside and, <laughs> and film in, a, in the drama bookshop. Uh, it, it was crazy, but I, I love it. That, that whole pilot is about uh, me still having a flip phone, which of course uh, in 2015, I finally got the iPhone. But you know, it's like a callback to a, a happier time when uh, we didn't have to do all this stuff on a phone. Well, I think, you know, too, I think maybe there's an opportunity now where it actually picks up more steam because it's almost become like a, a nostalgic piece to look back at a pre-pandemic life. But also, I get a little nostalgic, Seth, because personally, you're one of the first musical directors that I got to work with in my performing days. And I will never forget not only your genius at the keys, but how freaking witty you are. And you are very well known within the New York City world as not only being an amazing pianist, but an amazing host, songwriter, comedy writer, and just genuinely nice guy. Oh, go on. We should do this every day. This is great for my ego. But Seth, you know, you know, you know, I speak the truth, my friend. Come on. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You know, it's, it's Listen, nice to be here. <laughs> you are, you're extremely talented. You've had your songs performed all across the country and around the world. And by some Broadway stars, we're going to take a little sneak peek now while we talk at Broadway star Kate Rockwell singing a song of yours. And um, what what song is that that she's singing, Seth? And what, uh, Kate, and what musical is it from of yours? Kate sings this song, Hey, uh, which is from my musical Love Quirks. And Love Quirks, of course, as you know, started as a song cycle at the club where I worked on Tell Mama. But then uh, my friend Brian Childers was in it and he was like, I see this as a four person musical. And he brought his brother Mark in. And after 10 years of development, we finally opened uh, off Broadway last <laughs> February, 2020, just in time to run two weeks and then have to suspend performances. But it's a, it's a great show. And we, we do intend to bring it back this fall. Uh, it's just a lot of stuff is very up in the air still, but uh, we have every intention of uh, bringing the show back. And we actually did get to record uh, the Off-Broadway original cast album, and we will be releasing that. Uh, we're gonna release that when there's a link for tickets. That's what our marketing person said. They were like, do not release the CD until you have something to sell with it. Cause nobody buys CDs anymore. I know. But, stream it and we'll get half a penny for every track or whatever it just won't add up that much so it's more of a marketing tool these days so uh hopefully you know we'll, we'll come back stronger than ever uh be one of the first shows back off broadway and uh hopefully we'll we'll get our our, our audience will will discover us so the people who saw the show uh, absolutely loved it so we're, we're very optimistic and it's you know it's only four people on a piano though i did orchestrate uh for drum, bass, and cello on the CD, and that's going to be available. I feel like uh, doing a small show like that will be something <laughs> theaters will want to do uh, in the next couple of years. Absolutely. It's economically savvy, but also, Seth, you bring up something very interesting, and 
you know, that, that whole notion of streaming and musicians getting the short end of the sick when it comes to like a quarter of a quarter of a quarter of a half a penny per stream. And this is what I love so much about Phoenix. They literally are not just saying it, but they're doing it. They're putting more money in artists' pockets. So if you were to sell your album, Love Quirks, on the Phoenix platform, more money is going to go in your pocket, which is, I know, a groundbreaking idea. I but mean, it's I'm some, all for it. Well, and this is something that, you know, is it's unfortunate that it's taken this long for people to put their money where their mouth is. And I think of someone like you, Seth, you have so many plates spinning at once, whether it's developing a sitcom, whether it's writing novelty songs for specific performances and performance performers, whether it's musicals. And, um, and I just love also your eclectic taste in art. Who do we have joining us behind you? Oh, behind me? I have my Muppets. I, I love the Muppets, as you know. Uh, you can tell from my sitcom, I basically am a Muppet, but we have Ralph <laughs> here uh, with the Love Quirks uh, postcard. And then we have the Swedish chef and a couple of Piggy and, uh, and Kermit. And this is, of course, the Love Quirks cast. I keep them on my piano. Who's, who's my in your cast? Who's in your off-Broadway cast, Seth? Uh, we got Matthew Schatz, Lauren Testerman, Maggie McDowell, and uh, Aaron Lamar. And they're all amazing people. And they're all amazing in the show. Uh, you know, it's a great show. It's a just about, you know, being single in the city and trying to find love and getting past all those quirks that have been in your way. Uh, you know, you hit your, it's, they're in their early to mid thirties and like, you know, one is divorced, one had a broken engagement. Uh, and then you have uh, the Will and Grace situation where you have uh, the it's fruit fly is the PC term, the fruit, fruit fly who's, you know, in love with her gay best friend. And, you know, they have this codependent relationship which prevents her uh, from ever moving on. Uh, and then he's just a serial monogamous. And so all four of them are in this like kind of stuck place and through the show, uh, the year of the show, we watch them kind of grow and finally take that next step uh, towards finding happiness. That's amazing, Seth. And you know, when I thought of you and bringing you on board Phoenix and asking you first to be a part of it and you looking up and thinking it was a great idea, I thought about Love Quarks, frankly, because- uh -huh. It's a transcendent piece, Seth. It's a transcendent piece that I can see being played in New York City, in Australia, in the UK, in Japan, in China. I could definitely see it. Yeah, I'll tell you, Australia people really love my work. A lot of my C music sells to Australia. See, so, okay, so uh, this Phoenix, right? The cool thing is you're gonna be connecting artists and they already are. I'm working with someone right now. I can't say too much about it. But I'm working with someone right now in China on an original musical that I'm writing, co-creating, and set to direct through Phoenix. And it's, so it's already happening for little old Will. I can only think, Seth, if someone in the East, if someone in a different continent like Australia, where you already have a huge fan base, says, oh my gosh, Seth has been around for so long. Finally, yes, an off-Broadway hit. We want to bring it to Australia. I mean, I, I just love think- it. I just see this happening for you in I with hope the they help pay for my the flight too. That would be great. Wait, what'd you say? I hope they pay for my flight too. I'm totally dying to go to Australia. It's on my must go to list. Well, Seth, I can't promise whether or not, you know, uh, I, I can't do your contract for you, but I can look it over. But there might be a plus 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 that maybe your flight will be taken care of. That would be that would be great. I'll be down under, mate. That I can't do Australian. I could try. Good day, mate. No, it's not good. Seth, you've you've done so much, and you're very accomplished. You're an award-winning writer, and you've also actually, right before the pandemic, started doing some stand-up. Tell me about that, and what oh, yeah. you leap into that finally. Well, I decided to do stand-up, but mostly because I was told it would help the sitcom. Uh, but you know, I do cabaret, and it's literally stand-up, except I'm sitting down. So I call it <laughs> sit down, and I, you know, I sit down, and then I play a little dingle, dingle, dingle on the piano. Uh, and it's very similar, but for stand-up, uh, I'm, I'm just not sitting and I'm not singing, uh, but it was super fun. I got to make my Gotham uh, City debut at their club down there in Chelsea, and uh, people really seemed to enjoy it. And just when I was getting used to doing it, uh, everything shut down. <laughs> well, look at Seth. I love 
people can even tell right now and they can by the way everyone please below this video you can read more about more about seth you can look him up on youtube and all oh, over please. the interweb yeah i have three books on amazon too talk about i wanted to go are we reading each other's minds i i think so just like a book Go I ahead. The books are all the way back there. Well, but talk on. about talk about your book, Seth. Dun, 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 dun. I'm glad I put on pants. Uh, so this is my first. This is my third book. This is my first book. Uh, Sleep right now. Uh, there's a picture of my cat Smee, who I thought might make an appearance, but I think he's in a box. Uh, so this that I wrote. I didn't sleep for a year. I had this horrible breakup. I was dealing with a lot of grief. Two of my grandparents died, mm -hmm. uh, and it was just. One, one bad thing after another, it's 20, 2012 was horrible. And when I finally came out of it, I wrote this whole book about it because I found that a lot of people I talked to, especially older than I was, have been through similar things and I had no idea they were going through this. And so I'm such a public person. I was like, I will air my dirty laundry and show the world how horrible I had it. And I think this book has helped a lot of people who are going through a year of depression, insomnia, uh, and grief. And I love one of my friends was having a rough time. She said my book was more helpful than anything else. That's actually a direct quote. I'm not making that up. And I actually have had uh, random emails over the last like five years from people, from strangers who the book has helped. It's amazing. Uh, then I went back to funny. So every page a little set is uh, based on, so the web series version of the sitcom pilot, I did five seasons and then I did hilarious series finale where Smee and I, that's my cat, uh, we recreated finales from all the great TV shows. If you haven't seen it, it's really funny. Uh, but I looked up best, so I do the end of Cheers and the end of Star Trek, The Next Generation. Uh, but this is 30 essays based on the 30 episodes of my web series about being uh, in, in my 30s in the and single in the city. Of course, I'm cool. no longer single now that I've, I've turned you know past 40. Uh, but then this was my, so in the sitcom pilot, I actually have a line where I say millennials are ruining the world. And then I, I've just noticed how annoying this generation is. And I was like, I could totally make an essay book on this. And it's funny, a lot of millennials get offended when you say that, but it's not supposed to be offensive. It's supposed to be funny. There's, you know, literally- uh, I mean, an You have your own emoji. Yeah, it's my, it's the Seth emoji. And, you know, I, this is supposed to clue them in that it's it's a funny book, but I also turned this one into an audio book. And this is also the title of my podcast. Uh, and I, I made the podcast with a question mark instead of an exclamation point. So millennials could, instead of going, hey, they go, hmm. So Ooh. I call it millennials are ruining the world question mark and exennial perspective because I'm that little, Ooh. you know, between generations. So I say it's Real conversations bridging the gap between generations X and Y, because I'm kind of smack in the middle. Yeah. And then uh, my my catchphrase for that is, I'm not woke, but I'm awake. Seth, listen, I could speak to I you have forever. I could speak to you forever. You have so much going on. And I'm just so excited that with um, Phoenix, you're going to be able to expand your fan base and potential collaborations, whether it is your songs, your musicals, your books, your podcasts or just pictures of you and Smee. I'm so yeah, grateful for yeah. your time today, he Seth. Great. I'm sorry he didn't make an appearance today. I, I thought I he would come, but he, he's overall virtual everything. He's like, I put a fork in him. He he is done. He's like, he's, I posed too much for you. I, I don't want to do it anymore. Smee is zoomed out. Well, thank you very much, Seth, and talk to you soon, my friend. Yeah, it's great. So good to see you, Will. Thank you. Bye. In the digital age, artists and bands struggle to make a living. In fact, only a small number of artists can live off their craft. For the 98% of artists that don't have the luxury of being signed to a label, it's tough. But artists deserve to live off their art. Wherever you are around the world, appreciation of music does not change. Phoenix brings bands and their fans together whilst allowing bands to properly monetize their passion. The Phoenix app will directly connect bands and fans with no need for middlemen. We're utilizing the blockchain to give the power back to the artists once and for all. Join Phoenix, 
join the change.